What is that, a purse? We, uh... <laughs> Looks got, like a purse. Got some new photography storage gear. Heck yeah. So I'm trying out this little bag to put our action cam and our accessories and spare batteries. Yeah. Our bags that we use right now are huge, so Bulky. we don't take them out because it's cumbersome. Yep. But this, I don't know. I don't know if we'll use it, so I'm gonna try it out today. Let's test it out. Simple and maybe effective. I just have one question. Could we have ordered a slightly more manly color? Cause that's- Oh, we could not have. This that's is the only choice. kind of hurting me right now. Yep, that's okay. You don't have to use it. I'll use it. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So we had a small mishap last night with our circular oh, saw. Oh, I see it right here. I okay. barely missed the sawhorse. Look at that. That's you why I didn't even notice. By a sixteenth, yeah. maybe. But this Woo. one, I wasn't so lucky. Dodged the bullet. That's pretty good. Look how far that cut. That's oh, metal. Oh, man. So basically, there's nothing left of our circular saw blade. So, so far, we've hit the metal guides on the sawmill. We've hit sawhorses. Some point here, we've got to learn a lesson about metal things, but it happens to everybody. Right of passage. Yeah. I woke up this morning. I was thinking we should make a sign that says built by many hands and lots of coffee and put that on the house. Yesterday, we spent most of the day uh, acquiring materials. We saw a fantastic weather window right now, and we want to try to capitalize on it. We've got a pretty good list. I've been spending a lot of the poor weather days or evenings really crystallizing our plan for moving forward. The SIPs are still delayed tiniest little revisions, but we cannot sign off on our drawings until they're correct because when, when we accept them, well, it's on us now. So we wanna make sure that if there's an error with the SIPs, it's on the SIP company, not on us for not being good stewards of our drawings. So we're trying to kind of get moving. We need to make some sawdust. We need to feel like we're making progress. It's been a mental battle. We're gonna to try to make a big push in the next maybe four to five days. We hopefully are gonna get weather just like this, beautiful. So last night we jumped in and we did a little bit of uh, kind of measuring around our platform and our sill plates. We need to extend our sill plates. This sill plate of course is on the garage and our SIP panel is actually going to sit flush with this post, but the SIP panel is eight and a quarter inches wide and we're going to have a half inch sheet of gypsum board inside. So we need to have eight and three quarters of an inch away from this post out here for the SIP to bear on. We'll actually be installing what's called a shoe. It's a pressure treated board that the SIP locks into and fastens to. We're not gonna do that today. I'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. But we need to extend these sill plates out to ensure we've got the proper bearing for those SIP panels. Our engineer specified a four by 14 inch pressure treated sill that was necessary to have room for the floor and the eye joist to bear, as well as the sit panels to bear. This is not a four by 14. We could not find anywhere in our region the product that we needed. So we're going to have to improvise. This is a four by 12 single sawn pressure tree, which is probably in the categories of least desirable, pretty high up there, but we're gonna make it work. So our engineer helped us to create a plan whereby we can fasten an additional piece of pressure treat to cantilever this sill plate out. Because the sit panels don't actually bear down on the sill plate, this simply creates a connection at the bottom of the sip so that it's all sealed up. Hopefully you can kind of use your imagination on that. So we're going to be adding this four by four pressure treat to the sill plates to extend them three and a half nominal inches. Single sawn pressure treat is not very desirable because of its dimensional instability. It's notorious for twisting and warping and cupping and all these things. So it was a known gamble when we started with this material was the least of all evils. The other struggle that we have had is finding dimensional consistency. It seems like literally finding two pieces that are the same dimension, thickness and width is impossible. I couldn't believe how inconsistent this material is. It's becoming an issue now 
because our sills don't have the exact same dimension as you go down the rim board, even though the rim board was laid on a chalk line. So we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling to make sure that our sill plates extend far enough. That's what we were working on last night. It's probably easiest to see this issue right here. So this distance from our rim board to the edge of the sill plate is not consistent down the end here. You can even see it in the camera that this wood actually has a bend to it or a curve. The challenge is that this dimension is too short in some places if we add a three and a half inch piece of lumber. So last night I went around and mapped out our condition here with the sill plates and everywhere I've circled we're going to be at least a quarter of an inch too narrow which is really frustrating because it really represents a very small portion. It seems to be mostly constrained to this north wall. To be safe, we're going to add a three quarter inch extension all the way around the building. And then before the sips arrive, we'll actually snap a chalk line and cut the sill plates to fit basically perfectly-ish. We milled up these three quarter all weather plywood strips to help extend that sill plate. These are like a pressure treated plywood. Since they'll be exposed to the weather, we don't want to use something that's not rated for weather exposure. So we'll be adding this between the four by and the sill plate. The benefit, kind of a side benefit, is it'll create some vertical stability in the plates as we attach that. So that's the big project for today and maybe spilling over into tomorrow. One perk tomorrow is daylight savings time. Boop, boop, boop. I mean, it ends. So tomorrow's normal time, normal time, which means we're getting a lot more daylight and we've tried to kind of clear our slate. So we're hoping we can just put our heads down and make some headway on this. One of the big struggles with all this pre pressure treated that I mentioned earlier was dimensional consistencies. These are four by six stock. This one's four inches wide. This one's four inches wide. And this one is three and a half inches wide. I don't know how we could possibly build a consistent structure with materials that are just wildly inconsistent. inconsistent. When we picked this material from the lumber yard, they were very kind because it's not typical that a lumber yard will even let you hand pick through a unit. They let us do that. We picked the straightest, flattest, most consistent material we could find, and it was still not that great. These scarf men are looking a little pale. I don't think they've seen the sun in months. That's looking better. Whew. This one's got a little bit of rock in it. I think the rock might be in the plywood. It is. is it? This is actually pretty straight. My goal would be to have the sill extensions overlap the adjacent pieces of wood. So, for example, with this vertical sill, mm -hmm. if it's long enough, I'd rather have it go all the way from the concrete and overlap that outer sill right there. So kind of creating like a king stud type right. effect. Same thing on the outside. So this would actually come all the way past, okay. all the way out past. So then basically that little piece you're just sliding in. Right, okay. in, this, in this location, yep. So what we're trying to achieve here is a piece of plywood that is screwed and glued to this pressure treat. And then this whole assembly is going to attach to the sill plates with this long uh, lag screw. But because we need to, ultimately, we're going to end up chalk lining this outer sill plate after it's installed. And in some areas, we're gonna lose as much as half an inch of material out here. So we actually need to pre-drill these holes so that the head of this screw is actually recessed considerably. That way when we run a saw over here, we don't cut through our screw and damage our saw. And then to help increase the holding power of our screws, we've picked up a few washers that we can attach to the screw. And we're going to be using the same construction adhesive that we used on our subfloor between the plywood and the outer sill and the plywood and the inner sill. And when we're all done, Hopefully you should be able to drive a car on this. We kind of have this theory that if we can overlap the seams, so instead of having our plywood mimic the seams of our outer sill like this, we're hoping that where possible we can actually overlap 
which will kind of create this continuous beam type uh, effect with the plywood. So it's not gonna be perfect, but if we do this, each sill plate will kind of be holding itself up, where this will help each uh, successive uh, sill plate hold each other up. Ten feet, four inches. Perfect. I'm wondering if it'd be worth a little bit of my time to get our chop saw stand assembled. Maybe I should do that if you want to start pre-drilling and we can also get some of this glued and screwed on and then we'll have to cut a piece to fit the bottom. do you think we should let Alyssa use the old Armstrong caulking gun before we tell her that I got this one? I'm just kidding guys. It was Alyssa who remembered that we bought I this, remember. not me. I was just making sure we so, buy it. You know why she remembered? Because my hand was hurting. <laughs> She's like, there's gotta be an easier way to do this. So apparently, DeWalt thinks that all we do is cut one by four pine trim. I think there's enough sun today that we should be able to run our power tools off of the solar powers. That'd be ridiculous. So yeah, if you want to plug us into the inverter, okay. we'll make sawdust that way. Son, you're redeeming yourself after a pretty pathetic winter of solar. Looking good. It's like a glove. Nice. Wrangler Star would be proud. Why? Because we're using Loctite brand uh, adhesive. Oh, that's why everyone spams our videos with it. <laughs> Ready to install? Yeah, we gotta open that. Oh, right. Because we gotta mastic the back of these. Gotcha. Right? Fun. Ooh. So this is a cordless caulking gun. I guess everybody probably already knows that, but some people might be wondering what the heck is that? And it runs off of the 18 volt batteries that we already have. It has a control for the speed, so you can turn it up and down. Oh my God. Well, this is really going to come in handy when we're doing the sips. Oh, you know, I think what that is, is it backs off just a little bit, just like when you release oh, yeah. the tension on the, whatchamacallit. Uh -huh. um, so when you're applying like this and you let off, it actually backs off the pressure oh, just cool. a little bit. We also bought an extender so it can hold the larger uh, tubes. Oh yeah. That's looking about the right size, isn't it? This one's actually metal too, the quart one is. Now are we ready? Yeah, but I think maybe at some point we should do a race. Oh. Somebody gets to use this. Let's do it. Wow. Wow, holy crap, that's, that's a lot. so much work. That's so much. I wasn't putting nearly that much. That's going to go everywhere. Wow. Where was this when we were doing our sub Right? Floor? Man. That's it. Wow. You're, you're going to be mad at me if we're not getting this sooner. Right? Oh, wow. Oh, it's pretty good. Hello. How's your forearm? What forearm? Right. I have a forearm. Not bad, eh? I like it.
So we have one problem. The chuck on that impact driver is too big to fit in the yeah. three quarter hole. When we go to one inch, you're fine. But for now you need to get the Makita and you need to tighten those down because you're not getting the chuck all the way in there. So we need to do yep. the proper tightening on those. Many to go. I don't think it's dead, but the battery may be overheating. Did you check the battery? Battery says it's fine. So Alyssa's already having problems with the drill overheating and it's shutting off. And we're doing continuous work. We won't argue that. This is back to back to back to back yep. auger bit with a one inch auger. That is the difference. I did have a three quarters inch. Mm -hmm. So last night we were struggling with the saw and now we're struggling with the drills. Just be patient with it. Let's kind of keep keep working at it. Um, if we may have to switch to the impact. I'm not sure. Should I try that? Because I yeah. pretty much am not, I can't work right now. So. Yeah, you can try it see what happens. No, oh, that's, that's never gonna work. What are you doing? Huh? Did you get up today? Hmm? Did you finally get out of bed? What are you doing? Huh? Mom says you want to cuddle. Bugaboo, you're on a construction site. Cuddling is forbidden. It's forbidden on a construction site. Kaflop. Oh, the belly. Oh, the belly. Okay, I have to go to work, okay? Okay, bye. So it seems like the speed bits from Milwaukee are, I mean, they're aggressive. We already know that. These are like mm -hmm. high speed auger, right? Over time, we've managed to overheat the drill. So, so let's try spade bit on time the impact to driver. Go to the impact, yeah. <laughs> Frustrating is that the whole Ooh, reason we warm. bought this whole entire kit was for that drill. And the Milwaukee impact was like a bonus because we already have two impacts. Yeah, here's it's where you, here's where the heat oh, is. I feel it, yeah. It's not hot, it's warm. I wouldn't say it's hot, but it might be hot for a cordless drill. Like we had to compromise with a three quarter inch bit. It's still pretty warm, yeah. but it's it's cooperating. Oh, good. So let's get this one ready. And then uh, I think we should go up there and then together we can put them on. Good. We're gonna go up and just install this sill plate with this piece of plywood on it. Then we're gonna measure from here to here and figure out how much we need to extend the sill plates because our house is 34 feet or 36 feet, like 36 feet here, but these sill plates actually extend out past. So we're gonna have to put a small piece, something like 17 and a half inches in right here. And then we need to put a piece of plywood in here that's 17 and a half. We're gonna go up and measure this and try to figure it all out. Let's measure from that sill to the end, and then we'll also measure from the plywood to the end. So 23 feet plus 31 and a half. Don't be afraid to be generous with that because it kind of forms an air seal. Okay. Leverage a little bit more. Uh, okay, now we're getting better.
All right, that's it for the evening. We decided for once we're gonna stop while we're ahead. We almost finished the second side out of three and that probably surpassed my expectations. I think it really took a long time to get the first one, but then like always once we had a system, very quick. So I have no doubt we can't finish this tomorrow. I think this probably was the biggest win of the day. Can you imagine having oh, to I, pump? I can imagine, I definitely can imagine everything that. Everything we just did. This like done in what, yep. 20 seconds? I mean, Well, yeah. that thing was probably like a hundred bucks because we had the batteries. I don't remember what it was. It was a lot. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Not. They sure. don't even sell it at Home Depot. I think we had to get it online if I remember yeah. correctly. We tried to buy it at Home Depot. I think these are probably 300 bucks. Uh, well. It's so outrageous. Gosh. It's outrageous, yeah. but what's your forearm worth? Yeah. Uh, I think these tools for one time use, they're not really worth it, but we're going to need a lot of it. So for us, it's worth it. I would think if you're a weekend warrior, why bother? But if you're building a house, I have no idea how many miles of caulking we'll do mm -hmm. through this entire build. Cause we've got to do windows and trim right. and flooring and who knows all kinds of stuff. So why kill ourselves? But I feel like today, if you want to attribute anything to productivity, I agree. This may work good. So good job today. You too. Proud of you. Great system. They look great. The sail plate. Yeah, they do. They really great. do look good. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad we're doing this. It's so good for my mind too. So on that note, we'll see you guys tomorrow and we're going to pick up right where we left off. Wow. That's ridiculous. Just, just a contractor over here with all my hand tools. Can you go put all my stuff on the charger?